Welcome everybody to the Craster Cabin. I'm Mike. And I'm Jerry. And we run a crawfish company called Craster. And what really sets us apart for wild crawfishing is not only do we crawfish in our local neck of the woods, we have people reporting in for all over the country and all over the world on how they're successful with crawfishing. People also love all the information that we share on our Facebook and our YouTube channels. And we've found there's a lot of misinformation out there. There really is. And that's one thing people really like about us. And that's why we came up with the nine craster hacks for crawfishing to make you an expert at going out and catching wild crawfish. All right, let's go check out this first hack on bait. Bait is one of the most important key elements of crawfishing. It is, and you know, there's a lot of misinformation out there, Jerry. You know, relatives, when you look on the internet, you're gonna see a lot of hot dogs work best, cat food, dog food, tuna, things like that. Those really aren't the best baits. You know, your uncle might be able to go down and put a string on some bacon and catch a few crawfish. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about catching large numbers of wild crawfish. That's true. What we have found is that fresh fish that's oily works the best. Non-predatory um, fish. So you want to avoid fish that are predators to crawfish. Absolutely. Some of the best baits we've found are trout, salmon, tilapia, herring. Those are all really good. See, what you really have to understand is crawfish, they eat about 80% vegetation. And when they get the chance to get some good oily fish, why do they eat it? The reason they eat it is because they can get a lot of nutrients, fat to make it through the winter, different things to make their shells stronger. They'll come running for really good bait. There are some predatory fish that you don't really want to use. You know, when you use pike, catfish, things like that, bass, what you're going to find is they eat crawfish on a regular basis, and a lot of times even dead fish like that, the crawfish will move away from. We have extensively tested using fresh, oily fish, and it works the best. You know, it really does. Um, one thing you want to do is you have to do your due diligence. you got to check your laws depending on what state you're in, what country you're in, what area you're in. Make sure that the baits are legal that you're using. Like, just a for instance, we went and fished in Nevada. In Nevada, Fish and Game said we couldn't use any fresh fish. The only kind of fish that you could use was fish eggs. And so we kind of cheated a little bit. We took fish eggs and we actually crushed them up in a sponge. And then we put those in our bait traps, gave us some good oily fish bait to use. And another bait we used was chicken livers. If we couldn't use really fresh oily fish, chicken liver seems to work in a pinch. All right, now our next hack is going to be on finding great places for you to crawfish. And now let's check out this clip where Mike's down at the lake cutting up some crawfish bait. All right, I get a ton of questions about crawfish bait and the best baits to use. Um, people ask me cat food, dog food. I, I only use fresh fish. I find if you have uh, access to uh, like Shops that have salmon heads that you can get cheap, salmon works really good. Um, trout, uh, different things like that. I've been buying tilapia, and tilapia works really good. It's inexpensive. Um, you know, you try not to keep your get your bait costs kind of low. Um, I'm gonna show you, another thing is, uh, I'm gonna show you, people don't really know how to cut up the bait. It's really important. I've found that the skin on uh, works a lot better than if you just buy a filet with, um, with the skin off, that the oils and everything just comes out more. So here, I'm gonna I'm gonna cut one of these open, and I'll show you how I cut my bait. First, you get a really sharp knife. I like it when my tilapia or my fish is about half frozen. But what I do is I just go straight through the head. Then I come over to this side, and I actually get a gill, and that really has a lot of the things that crawfish are looking for. Then, and I'll show you another trick. Then what I do is I run my knife straight down the meat and get it so that all of that is exposed inside. Because you know, if your bait is just soaking and it can't get exposed to the water, and then what I do is I just go straight down through and I just cut little slices. And that is what goes in my crawfish trap. But then when you get it all cut up, I just put it in bags 
and that's pretty much how you do it. You just gotta get a lot of that fish exposed. A lot of people also ask me, they ask, hey Mike, you know what, do you like to rot your fish before you use it? I found they don't like rotten fish. Crawfish are pretty picky. So I usually find that the fresher the fish is, the better skin on, the head, the whole nine yards. Now if you use that kind of bait, you're probably gonna catch a lot. You know, there's some people say, oh, I catch them on cat food or dog food. There's some places that are so saturated with crawfish you can't miss. But if you're having a hard time getting crawfish, the better the bait you use, the more crawfish you're gonna catch. Thanks so much for joining me. You guys have a great day.